Welcome to Maths for All. I'm Ashling Flynn. This is functions 1.5, cubic functions. So cubic functions have an x cubed or an x to the power of 3 term. And refers uh, the word cube refers to something that is 3D. So length by width by height. Okay, so to the power of 3 is what we call cubic. The functions, when we put them on an xy graph, have two turning points. So two turning points. They will have at least one real root, so it will cross the x-axis at least once. And they can have three real roots if the function crosses the x-axis three times. We'll see pictures of those in a minute. It is possible to have two identical roots when the curve just touches the x-axis. And here's what we see. So um, the cubic functions have two turning points. So here's a turning point. Okay, I'll TP for turning point. And here's a turning point, TP. Okay, um, so that tells me it must have at least one real root. Okay, so the function will continue going down and it will cross the x-axis at one stage and that is where the real root is. Okay, and you'll see that that's all this particular one has. Uh, the middle picture here has uh, again the two turning points and due to its position you can see that it crosses the x-axis three times where the black dots are and they are three real roots. Okay, and the third scenario is when, here's our turning points, it's when one of the turning points is just on, so here, just on the x-axis, and it is as if two of the roots come together. Okay, so there are two identical real roots there together. Now, so let's look at them again. So cubic functions have two turning points. One of the turning points is called a local maximum. Okay, and here it's indicated on this uh, cubic function. So we can see the two turning points marked with uh, two red dots. And the one that's highest and it forms the top of a hill is called a maximum. But it's a local maximum. Local means in this general region, it's a maximum. Okay, because if we go elsewhere on the graph, uh, there are higher points. Okay, but they're not maximums. And one of the turning points is a lo local minimum. Okay, overall there is no maximum or minimum because the function goes on indefinitely. So it keeps increasing and decreasing in those directions. So there's our local minimum. So the top of a hill is called a maximum and the bottom of a valley is called a minimum. And they are both turning points. Okay, let's look at graphing the x cubed function. So graph the function f of x equals x cubed in the domain. Um, so x is between minus 2 and plus 2. Okay, so again you can form a table with your inputs as x here. Uh, carry out your function, x to the power of 3. Now remember what that means. Uh, if we take minus 2 as our input, it's minus 2 by minus 2 by minus 2. Okay, so your output or your f of x will be negative. Okay, negative 8 and so on. All right, remember that our calculators can do this job for us using the table function. Okay, and in this example, I've used 0 0.5 as the step. Okay, uh, it gives me more points to draw a smoother curve. Okay, uh, the calculator automatically selects one as the step, but you can change that. Now, what does it look like? This is what it looks like. Okay, so it starts low because the negative numbers when you cube them, give you a negative value. 
okay give you a negative value um, so from our table the first point is minus 2 minus 8 so minus 2 minus 8 that's this point here okay um, minus uh, let's look at the a whole number here minus 1 gives minus 1 that's here okay so having more in between points is an advantage and 0 gives 0 and then 1 1 2 plus 8 is up here and so on so when we have x cubed the graph starts low and it finishes high okay now you may ask where are the turning points when in actual fact in this one there are three identical turning points okay it's as if they've all come together so what was for different functions separate if you push all those three together and they cross over here at zero zero okay the graph has three identical real roots and the graph starts low and it goes high now let's look at an alternative one the minus x cubed function so f of x equals minus x cubed again there's the table now look at what we have for our first input when x is minus 2 the function there should be a minus there okay the function is minus minus 2 cubed so if you remember minus 2 cubed was minus 8 so minus minus 8 gives me a plus 8 okay again use your calculator to help you with this so what this shows so is a graph that starts high and finishes low okay so when you have a negative x cubed term uh, it will start high and finish low again this graph has three identical real roots and the graph starts high and goes low okay so they were the basic cubic functions and now we'll see what happens when the expressions are a bit more complicated graph the function f of x is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 in the domain from x is minus 2 up to x is 3 all right so here's my table you can see it worked out there again uh, use your calculator it will help all right and this is the function we get so let's just locate some of our points from the table so minus 2 give output 0 so that's here okay uh, minus 1 give output 8 which is here um, we have 0 6 that's there uh, we have 1 0 that's there we have 2 minus 4 that's there and I know that the next one will be looks like 3 0 all right so what can we say about this one okay we have three real roots one two three where it crosses the x-axis okay we have a local minimum here we are it's turning point we have a turning point up here as well it's a local maximum and the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is 6. And if we look back to our function, just like we did with quadratics and linear, the y-intercept can be seen here. Okay, plus 6. That's when all the x's are 0. You get 0, 0, 0, and 6. Okay. So this graph has three different real roots. It starts low and it goes high. Okay, and that's what we had previously for the plus x cubed. Starts low and finishes high for a plus x cubed graph. And the y-intercept is 6. All right. Now we're going to compare some. All right, we have three different functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. 
and uh, here's a table for each. Okay, so f of x is the one from the previous slide that's in black. g of x is very similar. It is, except it's multiplied by 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 uh, multiplied by what was f of x. So 0 0.5 is a half. Okay, let's look at the outputs from f of x. We have 0, 8, 6, 0, minus 4. So the outputs from g of x is half of what f of x. So where you had 8, now you have 4. Where you had 6, you now have 3, minus 4, minus 2. Okay, and h of x is very similar to f of x, but the intercept at the end is different. It's 3 bigger. So all the inputs from f of x are now 3 bigger. Okay, so let's see what that looks like on a graph. All right, so the black line here is f of x and it has y-intercept of 6 and our two turning points. Okay, um, the red line is uh, g of x and it um, it looks quite similar but shorter okay so where we had a maximum of roughly eight for the black one the black function we have four for the red one so it's each value is half of what the black one was okay and what about the green one well it is pretty much identical to the black one but everything has been shifted up there's um, the y-intercept at 9, everything has been shifted up by three steps. Okay, and that is our comparison there. Okay, so cubic functions and the factor theorem. So look at the following function. Alright, so we know it's cubic now. We know that it is a plus x cubed because it starts low and it goes high. And it has three real roots because it tr crosses the x-axis three times. What are they? So let's identify them. Okay, so they are minus 2, which is here. They are x is 1, which is there. And they are x is 3, which is there. Okay, so three real roots, and that's x equals. So what are the corresponding factors? So I want you to think back, um, you probably did most of it with quadratics. When you solved a quadratic, you got something like x plus 2 by x minus 3 equals 0. You were solving your quadratic equation to find the roots. The next step was to put each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x you'd get x equals minus 2. The same here uh, x minus 3 equals 0 so x would be equal to plus 3 so recall that if you can. So what we're going to do here right this time with three roots for a, for a cubic is we're going to track back so when you had a root of x is minus 2 just like here what was the corresponding factor it was x plus 2 Okay, uh, similarly, so that gives us that, x equals 1, this root would give us an x minus 1 factor, and x equals 3 gives me an x minus 3 factor. Okay, remember factors are multipliers. Okay, so what's this all about? If you multiply the three factors, it will give us the cubic function, okay? So f of x will be equal to those three factors multiplied. So you might need some paper there. You can pause and work it out for yourselves. But what it should give us back is that function there, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay? So factorizing gives you roots. And if you have the roots, you can use them by multiplying the factors to give you back the original function. So um, this was the function on the previous slide. 
positive and negative, so let's study the function some more. Look at the following function, and it's the same one as the previous slide. So it's asking us, for what values of x is the function f of x, so same function as before, positive? So for what values is the function positive? Okay, so when is the value of f of x positive? So remember that the vertical axis on our graph is f of x, so when is the value along f of x positive? So, and the answer is any time the output is above the x-axis, there's our x-axis, so above that is positive. Now, so we can see two sections in this graph that is positive. So firstly, the section from here to here, okay, that piece there, and then second, so that's positive, I'll put a plus beside that, and then this part here, and that continues being positive forevermore. Okay, so there are two separate sections where the function is positive and we're asked for what values of x is the function positive. So we're looking for numbers along the x-axis, okay, and that would be the x values between this root, uh, which is minus 2, and the next root, which is plus 1. So when the x values are between that, those two values you get a positive outcome. Okay, so how do we write that? So we'll say it's positive when x is between minus 2 and plus 1. So between we use the less than or equal to signs. Okay, both pointing the same way. So x is between minus 2 and 1. And also um, the function is positive anytime x is greater than this third root, which was plus 3. Okay, so we'll write and when x is greater than 3, the function is positive. Okay, um, so if they are two separate um, sections of the function on the graph, then you will have two separate answers for this part. Okay, um, quite similarly then, for what values of x is the function negative? Okay, so negative then will be the opposite to positive. It'll be when is the function below the x-axis? Then the f of x values are negative. So we can see, um, we'll mark it differently, this section of the graph is negative and also this section here is negative. Okay, so what are the corresponding x values? So the inputs will be when x is before minus 2, okay, or when x is lower than minus 2, that's that section. So less than minus 2, and then when x is between these two roots here, okay, and x is between 1 and 3. That is when the function is negative. So you can also be asked to describe a function in terms of it being increasing or decreasing in different areas. So we're staying with the same function as before, our f of x, and this time we're asked for what values of x is the function increasing? Okay, so when we're talking about increasing or decreasing, we always work from left to right. Okay, and if a function is increasing, it is getting greater in value or rising as you go from left to right. Okay, um, so let's look at our graph. When is it increasing? So scanning from left to right, it's increasing. If we start down here, it's increasing or climbing or rising the whole way up to this turning point. I'll do TP for turning point, that's a maximum. Okay, right up to there, after which it starts to fall. So this is increasing, up, increasing here. Then it starts to fall and it finds its lowest point at a minimum, turning point there, and then it begins to climb again, it's increasing. Okay, 
output INC for increasing. Okay, so there are two separate um, areas of the graph for which this function is increasing. Now remember, the graphs, if you were to go back the x-axis, um, you can they can go on forever and ever. Okay, so how do I describe the x values for which it's increasing? Now the first thing I need to do is I need to identify where those turning points are. Now if I'm doing from the, this from the graph, I will... Um, be estimating, okay, so maybe a little bit out, uh, you can, we'll see that you can find the exact answers through algebraic means, okay. So I'm going to say that this turning point has x value of, um, it's before minus 1, I'll say it's minus 0 0.9, okay, that's an estimation. And I'm going to say that the minimum turning point has an x value of 1 to 2.1. Now, Okay, depending on how your graph is drawn, you may find, have slightly different answers. Okay, so I'm going to say that this function is increasing uh, before x is 0.9. Okay, so I'm going to say it's increasing when x is less than minus 0 0.9 and when x is to the right of the minimum turning point which is 2.1 when x is greater than 2.1 okay so if there are two separate sections on the graph you need two separate answers like that now let's look at what if we're asked for what values of x is the function decreasing okay so when is it falling and you can see that between the two turning points it's decreasing, it's falling, it's going lower as you go from left to right. Okay, so how will we write that? So that is just one section of the graph, so it'll be just one answer. And the values of x are between minus 0 0.9 and the 2.1. And then use your inequality signs there. So now it's time for you to try some questions on that with your quiz and your written exercises.